Robin sees that right and true shall triumph unabused. grown a lot since the last time. He's the fair image of you, Edgar. If he aims to be handsome, much better he take after his mother. I'd hoped that you would come. But are you certain that it's safe to be here? No one saw me come. And before the cock crows, I'll be back at Sherwood. But the sheriff has spies. Things have changed even since you left. No one trusts his neighbor. That's the way they keep us under. By calling all those who oppose them outlaws and turning us against each other. What manner of man is this Robin Hood? A man who'll be remembered when these cruel lords and pat sheriffs will long be forgotten. No one dares speak well of him here, and they've tarred you with the same brush. Latin slanderers. One day, it'll all be different. Is it a merry life in Sherwood? It would be, if you and the little one were with me. You must be famished after walking so far. But dark bread and goat's milk is all I have to offer you. Having it at home, it'll be like a feast. This brigand, what do you call him, Robin Hood? He must be very bold. As bold as he's bad, and as bad as he's bold. Worst of all, the man is a traitor to his class. He was well born, almost as well born as we. His father and mine were friends. I knew Robin as a young lad. Sometimes I suspect our fair Marion of harboring secret sympathies for the outlaw. Surely you jest. Not at all. He and I meet quite often in the dead of night in his forest lair. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard he's very handsome, is this true? He's as handsome as Apollo and skilled in all the manly arts. Perhaps one day he'll assault our card book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid he's not your type, my lady. He's rough and uncouth, fit only for the company of cutthroats and ruffians. How dreadful. But how do you know what is my type? <laughs> <laughs> I see nothing funny about it. The serfs are getting out of hand. And if we're not careful, they'll soon be taking impossible liberties. It's very true, my lords and ladies. The villains on my estate are growing more and more unruly. A fortnight ago, a man refused to take the oath of allegiance to me as his liege. And they're beginning to grumble about their food and furnishings. They want beds to sleep on. Beds, mind you, just like us. And two meals a day. My dear Sheriff, your table could not be improved upon even in France. And the serfs? What other outrageous things are they demanding? My dear young lady, if the serfs revolt, it will not be amusing for any of us. 
Ever since Jack the Wagoner was murdered, matters have become worse. The villagers claim it was one of our men who did it. And they say, that's why we haven't brought him to justice. Naturally, that couldn't be true. Naturally. It's those outlaws who stirred things up. The peasants are beginning to regard them as heroes. A man to see you, my lord. And tell him to wait. But he says he brings very important news, my lord. Huh? Oh. <laughs> the duties of office. My humble apologies. My lord. <laughs> well, Humphrey, what is so important that you intrude upon my dinner? Uh, your pardon, my lord, but there is an outlaw in our village. What? Uh, an outlaw, my lord, a man called Edgar, a neighbor of ours. I saw him enter his house. How long ago? N -n Not half an hour ago, my lord. I, I ran up here as soon as I saw him. Tell my lieutenant to come here at once. Yes, my lord. Humphrey. My lord. How would you like to earn a little extra? Hmm? Oh, I'm most generous of your lordship. Most generous. Would you mind standing still for a moment? Now listen carefully. Yes, my lord. Jack the Wagoner was murdered in your village. So far, no one knows who did it. Might it not have been this outlaw? And if so, why shouldn't the villagers deal with him themselves? Under your direction, of course. If he could be found guilty, it would save a lot of tongues wagging, your lordship. Exactly. Now, go back to your village. I believe you are an excellent horsewoman, my dear Marion. I have brought in some fine Arabian stock, but I perceive the sheriff interests you more than my poor conversation. I'm sorry. You were saying you had some Arabian horses. And it would give me great pleasure to show them to you, or perhaps to take you riding. You're very kind. My friends, a piece of great good fortune has just fallen into our laps. One of the outlaws is now in Middlebury. And your men are arresting him? Better than that, my dear Count. I have suggested that the villagers should charge him with the murder of Jack the Wagoner. In that way, we can wash our hands of him, and the outlaws will be discredited. A brilliant notion, my lord. My compliments, Sheriff. But how do you know they can prove him guilty? My dear Marion, it will be for him to prove that he is innocent. want him. He came home to see his family. There's nothing wrong in that. We wouldn't have anything to say about him just coming to visit you, Matilda. He has brought the violence of outlaw life to this peaceful village. No, he's brought only gentleness and love. And if you hadn't come now, he'd have slipped away and left no mark of his coming. Except Jack the Wagoner's body lying dead. What do you mean? You split his skull with a rock and stole the little bag of coins he'd been saving all his life. Who, me? But I wasn't here when he was murdered. Don't you tell me this is the first time you've come back to this village. No, wait, Humphrey. We don't know that Edgar did it. It just looks as if he did. Then why do you say it? He's an outlaw. They live by thieving and killing. And Humphrey says he saw him do it. You saw me hit Jack the Wagoner with a rock? I saw you sneaking about the field behind his house. Near the very spot where his body was found. But last night was the first time So I... you say. The word of an outlaw against an honest man. But you all know Edgar. He grew up in this village. You've known me all my life. You've been living in the woods like an animal. Away from your people and your church. You're a desperate man, wanted by the crown. Yes, because I killed a deer for food. It was a lawless deed. Your first step from righteousness. But I didn't kill Jack the Wagoner. Can't you see that he's speaking the truth? No, not now. Not listening to him talk. But there is a means of telling. I think he ought to have a fair trial. My ordeal. Then if he's innocent, the Lord will allow him to prove it. What say you, Alvin? I can't bring myself to believe that Edgar would kill anyone. But I may be wrong. And I think it would be a good thing in his own interest to have it proved one way or the other. Yes, I think he should submit to the ordeal.
Marion, what brings you here? Bad news, Robin. One of your men has been taken in Middlebury Village. What? But last evening we were all here in camp. Then he must have slipped out during the night. It's Edgar, Robin. That's his village and he's not here. Edgar? Yes, he was restless to see his family. I feared this might happen. Well, we'll have to get him out of it. Little John! Jack's money pouch. something out of doors. Perhaps we'll be in time for a feast of some sort. What we need to know is if it's safe. No bailiffs, foresters or sheriff's men about. It looks all right from here. I wonder what's in that pot. Some tender fowls, plump mutton, a rich beef stew. Can you stop thinking of your stomach for just a moment? We're here to rescue Edgar. Don't be frightened. We're not going to hurt you. I'm not frightened of you or nobody. That's fine. What's going on over there, that pot on the fire? Ordeal with boiling water. Jack the Wagoner was murdered, and we think we know who done it. Well, what does a suspect have to do? Stand in it? Well, he has to take a bar of iron from the bottom of the boiling pot. And if his hand doesn't blister, well, we know he's innocent. Savage superstition. Where I come from, he has to pluck the bar from off burning coals. Far more civilized. What makes people think this man is guilty? Well, Humphrey saw him near Jack's house, and he's an outlaw. Well, surely that's a proof of his innocence. Yes, since when did outlaws harm poor villagers? You seem to know a lot about them. Who are you? They call me Robin Hood. Hey, come back here. Let him go, he's harmless. Well, now they've been warned, we'll have a pretty fight in our hands. We wouldn't have passed unrecognized for long. Listen, there isn't going to be any fight. We must come as peaceful visitors. Aren't we going to help Edgar escape? Certainly not. It will be like a confession of guilt. He'd never be able to visit his family again. Give me your weapons. Why, what are you going to do? I'm going to establish Edgar's innocence, not only for his sake, but for ours. We can't have the men of Sherwood branded as murderers. The friar's right, little John. Come in peace, friend. You know who I am. You are one of my men there. And we don't want any more. There are many villages in the Shire where we're welcome. They haven't had one of your outlaws steal in at night and murder a householder. No, they haven't. I'm glad you admit that. In fact, you've never heard of any man of mine harming poor people, have you? I have. There he is. Why are you so certain that Edgar is guilty? He's an outlaw. There was no trouble here before he came. No trouble? Well, this is a fortunate village indeed. I thought all England had troubles under Norman rule. There's no need to be in such a hurry, friend. The men of Sherwood are guarding the road to Nottingham. I'm sure you wouldn't want us to discuss such important matters without you. 
We're here only to see that Edgar receives fair treatment. And that means without the aid of his lordship, the sheriff. Your man will get a fair trial. Then you won't object if we stay and watch. I've no objection. But I'd also like to have a look around. You won't have much time. The fire's getting hot. And I'm sure I can count on you to keep it burning well. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with it, Robin, I swear. I shouldn't have come here, I'll admit. Don't worry, Edgar. We'll get you out of this somehow. Tell me everything you know that might help. Well, I wasn't even in the village the night it happened. No, you weren't. I don't know anything about it. Well, we'll have to see what we can find out. It's Matilda I'm worried about, my wife. I'll see her and console her. We will pray that the truth be brought to light. I want to see the place where the old man was killed and perhaps talk to someone who saw him that night. And as our amiable friend pointed out, we haven't much time. Well, Helen, this is a friend of Edgar's, Robin Hood. He wants to ask you a few questions. I mean no harm. I'm trying to help Edgar. May we come in? Edgar is a neighbor of yours, Helen, so you must have known him for a long time. Do you think he killed your uncle? Well, it's what they say. Who says? Everybody. But what do you think? Did you see somebody hit your uncle? No, no, I was gone. But you found him after he'd been killed. Tell him, Helen. Where did you find him? Over there. How long had you been gone? Since the moon come up. Do you mind telling me where you'd been? Well, that's not to do with it. You were somewhere with Alvin, weren't you? I, we were together, the maid and I. Where were you? In the meadow, back of where Ned the Miller lives. Her uncle wouldn't let anyone see her. Any man, I mean. So we had to meet at night. And you wanted to marry her? Aye. And Jack the Wagoner wouldn't let you? He had a bag of gold he'd been saving all his life. He thought anyone who came to see Ellen was after his bag of gold. After the killing, was the bag of gold gone? Aye, it was. How did you know? Why, Helen told me. I want Helen to answer this. When did you know the gold was missing? You're trying to make it seem like I did it. At least you had a good reason, which is more than poor Edgar did. Edgar had an outlaw's reason. Robbery. We don't rob the poor or kill for gold. Helen, you know more than you're telling me, don't you? I... Remember, an innocent man's life is at stake. The poor dead man's savings. The gold he was murdered for. Here in Edgar's house. How can you still say he's innocent? Because I know Edgar. He couldn't do such a thing. You don't believe them, Father? No, I don't, Matilda. And what about this? Jack Wagoner's name stitched on the pouch. Where did you find it? Over there, under a loose stone in the hearth. Is that true, Friar? They'd searched the house before I arrived. None of us knows how it got there. <laughs> As if there's any doubt. Which of you found it? I did. You've been a very busy man, Humphrey. Why, that I have. And a good purpose. We found a murderer in his loot. In the wrong order, it seems to me. First of all, you accuse a man, and then later you discover the evidence. I don't have to answer any of your questions. I'm not on trial, Edgar is. I'm not so certain. How did you know to look for the pouch under the loose stone? Well, we looked for it other places, but that's where we found it. Come, Wilfred. This trial's been delayed long enough. If this is Jack the Wagoner's gold, it belongs to his niece, not you. How do we know she'll get it? On my word, as an outlaw. <coughs> Come in. 
Take this to Helen and try and win her confidence. I'm sure she knows who killed her uncle, but she's afraid to tell me. She might confide in you, Father. I understand. I'll do what I can. Show me where they found the coins. Over here. Here, under the stone. Was it loose before? I don't know, unless... unless Edgar... But he couldn't have, could he? He hasn't changed since... Since he came to Sherwood? Only for the better. You can be proud of Edgar. I'm going up there now to tell him you still believe in him. Now we can see whether he's telling the truth. Edgar, put your hand in there and take out the bar. First, I have a suggestion to make. More delay. One with the the outlaw has a suggestion to make. How long are we going to put up with this? My suggestion is this. Edgar must submit to the ordeal because he's suspected of a crime. I accept that. You accept it? How well, good of you. But there are also grounds for suspicion against at least one other person. Alvin, you'll admit that you're not entirely clear in the matter. I didn't kill him, I swear. Are we going to listen to this outlaw and his nonsense? Let's get on with the trial. Edgar, submit to the will of Providence, or we shall adjudge you guilty. Ah, Neither you nor your witches called and are going to judge him guilty without more proof. Step aside, or blood will be shed. Yes. Yours as well as ours. Bring Helen with him. No blood need be shed. We know the guilty man. Helen, tell these people what you told me. He did it. When I came back the night it happened from being with Alvin, I saw him attack my uncle. He lies! The priest put her up to this. Why didn't you tell us this before, Helen? Well, Humphrey said he was a friend of the sheriff's, and if I told anyone what I'd seen, he'd see that I was branded as a witch and burned at the stake. Oh, my God! Devil! And you let us put the blame on Edgar just because he was an outlaw. That was the sheriff's idea. He wanted to make the men of this village lose faith in the men of Sherwood Forest. Shall we give the sheriff our answer? <laughs> I asked my husband what manner of man this Robin was. Now I know he's in good hands. My life's work seems to be keeping Edgar out of hot water. If I could come to Sherwood. You would always be welcome. Come on, Edgar. through the glen, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men, feared by the bad, loved by the good, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. He called the greatest archers to a tavern on the green, they vowed to help the people of the king. They handled all the trouble on the English country scene and still found plenty of time to sing. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Robin Hood. 